from the campus of Westfield State University. This is 89.5 FM, WSKB, Westfield. Support for the community programming of WSKB is provided by the Dunkin' Donut Shops of Westfield and the Sardinia family. It's nice to know that even as the world changes, Dunkin' Coffee remains the same at seven convenient locations throughout Westfield. Okay, I think we're good now. Check one, two. Wow. I have no idea why we were feeding back. Are we? Are we on? Yes, we're on, Bob. We are on the air. Okay, yeah. fabulous. Good, good. We were good. on the air the whole time. It's just every time I opened the mics, they would feed back. I got it. You'll notice that Peter and Rick want to have nothing to do with this. I'm dressed up as Bill Belichick, man. <laughs> I'm gonna throw the hoodie on. Absolutely. I'm wearing nothing the gray to do paid radio and play. I'm wearing the gray hoodie. And I got my Patriots gear. I'm, I'm Bill Belichick. Gotcha. And what are you dressed as, my friend here, personal assistant Rick Berry? Um, myself. Yourself. The man that survived yeah. the Volleyball <laughs> Hall of Fame. Man of the Hour? What yes. is that? What the is man, the man that man survived the, the Volleyball Hall of Fame induction. Yes. Uh, oh, okay. This is like man gets up in the morning and says, what does he want to wear? Right? right? Yeah. No. I. Yeah. I knew what I was wearing because you, you, I did, you know I didn't want to show you two up. You didn't want to show us two up. Yeah. <laughs> How? I don't think Rick has <laughs> looked at Alice Cooper once. Gene Simmons. The Gene Simmons. Time. What did? Yeah, Gene Bob. Simmons. Bob. Yeah. I'm. I'm, gonna I'm put playing a kiss sign for a reason. There that Wait says, a minute. This is Gene Simmons, not Alice Cooper. You did this last month too. <laughs> Wait a minute. I just advertise. Everybody's expecting me to be with Alice Cooper. I'm with Gene Simmons. I mean, <laughs> I mean, you're essentially Alice Cooper. You're dressed am, like Alice Cooper. I'm Alice Cooper, and I didn't even yeah. know it. Yes, yes. He wore, he wears Cooper a top hat like, like this. That. Yep, he wears a top hat. No, you're kidding. Yeah, me. but he get, he has his makeup just. He like has he has like black around his eyes and then like little lines, but that's about it. He doesn't do full white like this. Oh, so he's the, but you're the same. The two of you have the same kind of eye oh. makeup. I'm not, you know. Did His you doesn't take two the, hours. Did you know the <laughs> difference between Alice Cooper and Gene Simmons of Kiss? Yes, Bob, we do. Yeah. Both of you knew that. Yeah. 
Well, <laughs> I even said Gene Simmons in my email. I know, but <laughs> this is Bob. Welcome, in my mind welcome, got to, welcome to welcome to Bob One Hundred One on Instagram. If you go to Plast Bob on Instagram, you'll see this wonderful email that says Alice Cooper and me. Wow, Alice Cooper and me. And I do this thing about well, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, boost Alice Cooper to Buble, and uh, you're gonna try me to get me to like Alice Cooper. Now. <laughs> I don't know anything about Kiss either, but the difference between Alice Cooper and Kiss, to me, is... Alice Cooper is one man. Kiss is four guys. That was the question I was going to ask you, was where did Alice Cooper, the band, get its name? Alice Cooper is the guy's stage name. And Alice Cooper is not... Uh, that has nothing Kiss. to do uh, with it's Kiss. Not, the band isn't known as Alice Cooper. No. See, it's just Alice, Alice Cooper, and then he has a supporting band with him. Oh, well. Alice Cooper folks, is essentially a solo artist. You'll know why I'm old. I just don't, I, 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 got, I haven't got the difference. Take a look at this. Um, this is Max Dewey, Maximilian Dewey. This is our Halloween show, if you didn't get it by now. Look at this. Holy, yeah, Rick. Take a gander at those shoes over there. I ha I've, I've looked at them. Why do I have to look at them? <laughs> it's like... <laughs> oh, my god! He's scary. Now, um, <laughs> where, where does one pick up an Alice... I mean, like, I got Gene this... Gene Simmons. Huh? Gene, Gene Simmons. Simmons, Bob. Oh, Gene... Where does Gene Simmons... I'm going to take the hat off now, everyone. All right. <laughs> yeah, there we are. Oh, God, look. I've returned to the... Now I look like a, um, a, a Q-tip. This is what a Q-tip I used a few Q-tips today to oh, remove the white. <laughs> yeah. Don't you dare make a reference to that. Okay. Um, <laughs> at any rate. So next week, Bob, uh, to answer your question, Rick, next week, Bob will be haunting Rehoboth Beach. Yeah. I'm going to be haunting Rehoboth Beach. I'm looking for Alice Cooper. I'm yes. going to be looking for Alice Cooper. Yeah, there's Cooper. that. I can't believe I made this huge mistake. But it doesn't make any difference because... We're still going to have fun. We're still having fun. And quite honestly, that costume is a heck of a lot more exciting than the ones that I saw for Alice Cooper. Well, hang on just a sec. Let me do this. Wait a minute. Oh, oh, oh. oh. He's gone full. Oh, my God. Can you get a full shot of that, uh, Peter? Uh, uh, maybe if you do the, like the, without the green screen. Oh, no, I can zoom out. He can walk in All front right. of the All table. right, now, ro 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 uh, Max, go in front of the camera right here. Over here. Okay. Now, you'll explain. All right. Now, tell me then. Gene Simmons design. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh man. my God, help me! Holy God! All right. So look, um, tell me how Gene Simmons came up with this outfit. Is it synonymous of any kind of? Hey Bob. Yeah. It's called a gimmick. So <laughs> yeah. So of course so you gotta have a gimmick. I, I do have an answer for this. Okay. Um. The members of KISS all chose something that sort of represented themselves. So between Paul Stanley, Peter Chris, Ace Frehley, and Gene Simmons, right. they all chose different things. Right. Ace Frehley was obsessed with like space and like the planet and like astronomy. And so he chose the spaceman with which had like st which had like this futuristic look to right, it. Right, right. Peter Chris was uh, loved like jungle cats and stuff like that so he sort of he, that's why he's the cat man paul stanley's is interesting because his is only a star on one side yes. his is the only one that isn't symmetrical that's because when he was born he didn't tell anyone this un until like the 2000s when he was born with like half of his left ear missing oh really and so in like the 2000s he actually had had it surgically fixed but so it sort of represents how like half of him isn't there, and so the one star on the left, on the on the right side, right. is representative of that. And so, since he's always like, so he's the star child because he's he's also the front man, and so he's right. the, he's the one that people see. He's the yeah. he's the poster child, the star child. And then Gene Simmons is like this demon character. The the um, and so. And it's yeah. actually it it is based on a demon. Correct. Kind of, do, 
demon kind of thing. Yes. On a bad hair day. Um, the the <laughs> hair, no, the hair actually has a purpose as well. Um, in the beginning, his hair would stick to his face when he was putting on the makeup. And so he started putting it up, and he would just leave it up for the show, and it stuck. Oh. So that's uh, why it's up uh, in the, like, uh, a little tuft up there. Now, in the original costume, is he? Are those real spikes? Because your spikes yes. are. My spikes are soft. Your soft, soft These spikes. These ones aren't. Ah, uh, yes, the choker collar. Yeah, I. It it has a sort of sense to it of. How do I say this? Bondage. It's Fifty Shades of Gray. Yeah, I, mean, I, I can so, see how you. So can, many, it, it's I mean, just, like punishment. It's just sort of like, I guess, violent in a way. Ah, uh, gotcha. But it, it's yeah. not like, sort of like promiscuous in any way. No, no, not at all. I mean, it's more. Albeit, he does do some very promiscuous actions on stage. Yeah, but so and in real life. Yes. And, and yes. In real life. Yeah. Yeah. Now Gene doesn't eat snakes. I got that wrong. Alice he, Cooper is the one that no. bit a snake a head off. No, that was Ozzy Osbourne, Ozzy Osbourne who bit the yeah. head off of a live bat yeah. on stage. Right, yeah. Oh. Bob, you gotta get your you need to watch a documentary on metal. This is heavy metal and not hard rock, heavy metal, yeah. Yeah. But how about glam rock? Isn't glam rock very similar no, to that's people David often Bowie. consider Kiss to be glam because of their appearance, mm. but they're not glam. Mm. They're that's hair like metal. David Bowie and, and things and uh who would also be glam rock? Uh, well, uh, oh, I know. Well, Bauhaus. I'm going to play Bauhaus for you. Do you? I'm, I'm really up on this. You know Bauhaus? No, Neither one not. of you know Bauhaus? Apparently not, no. Bob. There, There is one part of this costume that I particularly don't like. All right, I've, so tell I've me. Struggled if there's a spike on your rear end, there's a problem no, in sitting down. No, <laughs> that I have struggled to find the purpose for it. What? The spike on the inside of the palm. Now, when I wear this at school, right. and I wear this during the day, right. I can't write with because a pencil of that. because of the spike. So I have to take. How the can full you play a guitar with that? Exactly. Like that's not how he would wear it. I I think they just misplaced the spike, like ah. because I think it's supposed to be more like that and more off to oh, the side. Oh, I get it. Okay, but like, maybe it's a they, different hand. Your side, you have to. The, the hand I, I has think to it's be just judged. a cheap costume, Bob. I think it's just a cheap costume I got off of Amazon. <laughs> well, you got this costume off of Amazon? Co well, I got the costume last year, actually. And yeah. I wore it last year. Yeah, yeah. And I love it. So it I, is. I was like, it is I still great. have everything. I, I still have the makeup. Why not use up the makeup? What, um, uh, have you ever gone as um, Gene's... Wait a minute. When he's known, is he known as Kiss... When he's dressed up like this, or is he, is he known as Gene Simmons? He's known as Gene Simmons yeah. both ways, whether, whether he's yeah. dressed up like this or not. Huh. Um, yeah, Kiss is, the, Kiss is the band. Kiss is the Kiss group is of them all the together, band. yes. Uh, and Gene Simmons said by himself. Well, he's never done he's never done anything on his own. Well, well he has, actually. Well, but, yeah, but yeah. I mean, nothing that's of consequence. nothing substantial. Yeah. Nothing of consequence. Yeah. He's yeah. best known for his time with Kiss and right. marrying a Playboy supermodel. And having a TV show called Gene Simmons Family Jewels. Which I thought was hilarious, actually. And w in real Actually, that's what you should go watch, Bob. You should go find Gene Simmons Family Rules because that was. Family Jewels. Family Jewels, that's right. Family Jewels. That, mm. that show was actually ran for like four or five seasons, I think. Yeah. I think oh, it okay. All and right. it was like the, the real life documentary of the goings on of Gene Simmons and Clan. No. His kids are surprisingly normal. Yeah. yeah. Well, I suppose His daughter has like the shortest tongue on earth. It's crazy. <laughs> um, there, I, I, what is that all about? I don't get it. He used to stick his tongue so, out on stage. Gene Simmons has a long tongue. Like it goes past his chin, his tongue. Yeah. It's, and people, there's all sorts of rumors that like he has, it's a cow tongue that he had surgically attached or a giraffe tongue because of that. how long it is. It is not, they are not true. It is his real tongue. He does have his tongue insured. Where does the tongue hang out? Of his mouth? No, I know that. But, I mean, if he's got such a it big It hangs out in a nightclub, Bob. <laughs> no, no, On I'm stage. talking about our tongues are of a pr particular... Picture your tongue. I don't have so room in my... So picture my tongue. Yeah. And picture about another inch and a half. 
Where does that tongue hang out in the mouth? There's no room in, in his mouth. To, so I wonder if it's can, attached a little bit further back so it has a little bit more room to go. So quite honestly, then, the tongue came first, then the costume. <laughs> Is that the way it I works? think it just happened by circumstance. It just happened that the costume had sort of this demonic thing, and then the tongue, which... What's and then the Mick, legend Mick, Mick, Mick Jagger. I always got that confused because there's oh, a oh here we on, go. Yeah, Mick M Jagger sizable too, Bob. But you're conflating most of the '60s and '70s <laughs> into one. Like I'm into, surprised Rick has been so quiet on this whole thing. I, I, I'm just, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm just along for the ride on this train wreck. <laughs> 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 I don't get it. You I, don't get No, I mean, okay. Right. Okay, so, Max, you need to send Bob some documentary links. So I'm he can, going to have to. Because well, that's how Bob learns. I yes. watched the Grateful Dead one, but Grateful Dead has nothing. To, I equated that's the That's an entirely Dead. different genre. I know it Grateful is. Dead is more like the, the hippie culture. Mm, mm. Yeah, that's like Woodstock. Okay, so who is the first heavy metal band? Black Sabbath. We went over this last month. We Black did. Sabbath, Deep Purple, Led Zeppelin, according to the uh, internet. Uh, all right. And where did this this kiss belong? When when did when were we all kissed? Kiss came out to the scene in 1975. N 1975. There's a train wreck going by. <laughs> That's why I'm playing it. <laughs> <laughs> Just the train coming by. I said. Don't worry about it. Yeah. No. 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 Uh, what do you know about Kiss, Rick? What do you know about? Do you know? Not, not a lot. Not a I lot. Know, I know quite a bit. I know yeah. they had a few top forty hits. Yeah, I can't remember. I know their probably their top international song um, is I mean, annoyingly they were, a disco song. They were um, huge, Bob, for a long time. Yeah. Where are they? Where was I? The, I think I believe that a lot of their success was mainly due to the fact that they merchandised everything. Well, that was mm. Gene Simmons because yes. he's a. Gene Simmons is a certified genius, actually. Well, they made well, they made they made really Kiss is. pinball machines. They made Kiss comic books. They made lunchbox. Yeah. Everything. You don't see any Beatles pin. Well, I mean, maybe in the Hall what of Fame, you, but you don't see no, any Beatles do pinball mean? machines. You don't see be any you Beatles do, but comic they, you books. Do, but they really started the they started right. the but they marketing they, yeah. more than just selling records. Yeah. Kiss Gene put, Simmons. They were marketing it. They were marketing it while they were. Yeah, Gene Simmons still is a genius. Alive. Relevant. Yeah. The way they were still. They, relevant. And they oh, they oh. they also marketed it as they they put a vial of each of their blood into the ink at the factory. So each of their DNA was in the ink on all of the comic books. So then it was like, oh, these comic books are so cool. They've got like the blood in the ink. It's true. Did you? Yeah. Really? Yeah. 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 You didn't. <laughs> How much blood do you have to give for how many? I like mean, I like said, a Bob, world of comic the, books. The world of Kiss is literally just a gimmick. I mean, they were a good band, right? Right, right. But well, you never... <laughs> they I, I might argue that. They're a good band, but it's 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 like a wrestling gimmick. Mm -hmm. So they mm. created the world of Kiss and, and the, whole, the whole mystique of Kiss, and that got them from being a good band right. to being superstars. A, yeah. Sort of like Kardashians were the... Well, maybe not the first. Kiss one. to Kardashians. I'm not sure the connection here, Bob. Oh no, the Kardashians are all about marketing. Yeah, the, I, I oh, see okay. that. Market, yeah. marketing, marketing. They're, they're and the, didn't one of them marry one of them? No, uh, no. I mean, no. like they were. Connected. I think they're a lot older, Bob. Yeah, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, Kiss is all in their 70s right a now. A Playboy, a play, one of the Playboy playmates of the year, Shannon married, Tweed. Shannon Tweed married Gene, Gene Simmons. Simmons. Oh, there, there's where I'm getting. Yes, this that's game. where you get. See, you're conflating everything, oh. Bob. <laughs> <laughs> when is he not? Well, that's it's oh. the char That's the charm of Bob. Well, I don't know. I don't we, know whether it's we, the charm or the, the, the. No, you wouldn't call it naivete. You would call it stupidity, probably. No charm. 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 That's who you I are, Bob. I don't think I could go. I don't know. So were they a drug band? And, no. You know, because well, in no, my they mind, were actually, well, they were fairly straight. Um, with the exception of the early drummer, Peter Chris, who did, who he was on, he did a few drugs mm -hmm. near the end of his stint with them, his f end of his first stint with them. Right. Um, Ace Freely was the big drinker. Uh, he would stumble around on stage oh, during guitar solos because he was drinking like every show, yeah, 
And that was partly why they dismissed him from the band. Oh. Gene Gene Simmons ran a pretty tight ship, almost Gene, as almost yeah. as tight as uh, as um, Steven Tyler. Oh. Steven Tyler ran a very tight ship. That's now, why those bands were successful. Okay, wait a minute. Now I'm putting. Now you have added Steven Tyler. To well, but I'm talking about like the the front man of a band running a very tight ship, and that's why the bands yeah. stayed to be successful. Sure, sure. That's that was the deal. Yeah. Well, Steven Steven Tyler, um, was his what was his band? Aerosmith, Bob. And they're not the same. I mean, they're not of the same ilk. They're rock and roll. But 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 they don't why, have the whole dress up, do, get up thing. But Steven Tyler has a tongue. Yeah, the, 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 most humans do. No, <laughs> Bob, you're you're trying to you're trying to equivocate too many things. That doesn't work that way. No, no, wait a minute. Steven Tyler, doesn't he do like uh, uh, something in the songs with his large, doesn't he have a no. large tongue as well? Why am I getting it all confused here? I don't know, Bob. I don't know, Bob. They're all blending in together and I am, I'm having a trouble, I'm having a heck of Gene a... Gene is really the only one with a sizable tongue. Oh, all right. So, Rick... What do you think? Do you, do you think don't get me involved in this conversation? <laughs> <laughs> this, this, this band, Kiss, is yeah. Gene Simmons' costume a popular costume at Halloween? I mean, like if I went to Spirit of depends Mount, on what year you ask. Not right, not right. This year, it's not. It, but you know, it has been. It for, has been for in the seventies and eighties. I would yeah, say, yeah, yeah. The, all four of them were pretty popular. I mean. Yeah. My English teacher showed us a picture of when he was 18. He w he went as Paul Stanley. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I went as Ace Freely a couple years ago. Yeah. It was a very I was that was when I was first getting into Kiss. Uh -huh. And um my hair wasn't as long as it is. This is a wig. I but no. my my real no, hair underneath great, is great. very long. That that yeah, well I know it's very long. Yeah. I've seen you in yeah. person. Well, I've seen you in person here. For those just but... joining who don't know who I am. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Bob, you never introduced everybody. Oh, gosh. Wow, it's Tuesday. I forgot that this is... You are so taken. Yeah, yeah. This is October 24th, 2023 and counting, and maybe it's October 31st where you are, 2023 and counting. This is... Yeah, because we're going to do a repeat next we're, week. We're, yeah, this is... Okay, so I want to show you my costume, so I'm going to take this off. All right. I am going to... Rehearse. All right, Rick, you can carry the show for yeah, a minute. Yeah. No. <laughs> what, what is it? How yeah, is he's the just going to do... How is no, the Volleyball Hall of Fame induction, I'm going to put the hat on. Yeah, he's going to put the hat on. Wait a this is, this he is looks like Tom Petty. Here. All right. I didn't believe it. You mean <laughs> what do you I'm think? dressing as Alice Cooper? He looks like Tom Cooper? Petty. A that's, little bit. That's yeah. more Tom Petty. Uh, that, that, Alice in Wonderland, the Alice in did, Wonderland. Did you video? guys ever see the dirt? Kind of the way he looks. He looks know. like maybe, Razzle maybe, a little bit. Maybe the way Tom Petty looks today. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Too soon? Yeah. Hold too. on. Let me zoom out for Bob. Oh, too soon. All right. There. Scro Ebenezer Scrooge. That is part of his Scrooge costume, yeah. <laughs> now, I am known in show business in Rehoboth. In show business in Rehoboth. Yeah, show business in Rehoboth. This is what <laughs> happened. You see, they Very were all... Very niche amount of show My business. friends were all Dennis Akins and his... The people who live in his complex, okay? That's not a nervous complex or a... Um, a, 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 a what do you call it? Napoleon those? complex? Huh? A uh, Napoleon complex? A Napoleon complex. No, com he's too no, tall. It's, uh, in his uh, apartment complex, <laughs> they decided to... Uh, all of these people... Women and men decided to go as the Adams family. So he got like I don't know how many people. That's a little bit eight people. Six, creepy seven, and kooky. Yeah, no, it's actually yeah, oh, ooh, nice one. Thank you. And uh, <laughs> thank you. And so last year we were scheduled to go down, and somehow or other we didn't make it. James was going to be it. Okay. Cousin, were you, were you I, playing tag? Uh, Cousin, David, no, it. yeah, yo, yeah, yeah. Oh my God. You're playing tag. And in fact. Uh, his costume is really great. He gave it legs this year, and the legs are um, are really something else. You and, and what do you do with legs? You put uh, you, you walk the, with them. Yes, you walk with them, but you've got um, like like these you clothe you, them nylons that are there very uh, stockings. Stem when well, they're not really stockings. Leggings. No, no. Women have tights. Them. 
tights. There we go. Yeah, but they're very, they're very interesting tights for Halloween. Interesting so, tights for. And Halloween. he's going to be like eight feet tall, and um, he had Basha Bell did things hair this week. Basha Bell is from Vivid Hair. Isn't Salon. thing the hand? Doesn't the hand? No, have, the, the hand, hand doesn't have the hair. Hand. The hand is. Thing, the thing. The thing. Yeah. You oh said, no. Okay. Well, I said. Okay. You said they it. did the thing's hair. Thing I'm ain't con- got no hair. <laughs> <laughs> I'm conflating the thing with the it. Conflating right. kiss. Conflating cousin, Adam's family. Cousin it's hair was done by Basha Bell, at the Vivid Hair Salon, and I went in to pick it up, and she said it's given us more problems. You know, the hair goes from the top of his head down, down way. It's supposed to go yeah, all the way, all down, the way down, down to, to the kn- down to like his knees. Yeah. Well, well, the floor basically, if it was the real it. But he gave him legs so he could walk. Yeah. So I went in, and Basha said, "Oh, Bob." This this has taken, we spent two hours, everybody in this salon has put their hands on its hair. <laughs> and, and they oiled the hair, they cut it, uh. they styled its hair for this appearance in Rehoboth. All right, now that has nothing to do with me. I was supposed to be... Um, I was supposed to be granny last year, and I couldn't get it in my... I wasn't thrilled about being granny, and I kept saying no. So this year, Dennis got another granny. and so You got another been, Grammy? Uh, granny. No, oh, that, granny. that's Michael you've been out. This, you've... Is, this is a totally different... This is Rehoboth Halloween. Gotcha. Speaking of Boobly, why don't you show, show everyone what I got gotcha. you? Uh, yeah, well, show. So I got, I got Bob a, a CD. Last month, uh, he mentioned that he loves Michael Boobly. So Look I this. happened to find a Michael Boobly CD at, the trade, at a trading post. The CD is actually in really good condition. Oh, it's a, oh my God. Well, I can't wait to play this. Um, uh, thank you, Alice. Um, Jean. 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 Thank you, Jean. <laughs> So, all Don't right, worry. So get he screws this, up I'm, my name, and it's only me and Bobby here. He calls me Rick. <laughs> <laughs> so get this. My um, role this year, they didn't have a role for me. So I was trying to figure out what I was going to do. So I went and I found this steampunk outfit, okay? Oh, I have got to see you in a steampunk uh, well, outfit. This, that is, would be a, so this cool. is a steam. This is steampunk vampire revisited. Only steampunk vampire. Steam- is, that, is that a vampire with just like a top hat with the goggles on it? We added that. I added the top. James and I put the top hat together. Oh, you currently are a steampunk vampire. This would be a steampunk vampire. All right, with with, the, with the goggles. No, don't I you, don't know. I don't know. I, I, I so I when I think of steampunk, I when I think of steampunk, I think of like the the like tr- the three piece suit, the um the funky goggles with all the gears on the side yes. and the top hat. Yeah. With yeah. The, well, doesn't this this vest here? Take the vest, the yeah, I feel like the vest would do it, but yeah. that... Well, okay. So, get this. I'm going to be wearing this costume, only I'm going to be advertising the Adams Family. So we have made, and I, I uh, J- James Johnson Corwin, my friend, the curator of Wiles Creative Arts Center and illustrator, illustrated for me the, um, uh, the Adams Family Mortuary Services calling card. We put the fun in funeral, folks. We 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 put the fun in funeral. Nice. Our dead nice. are grateful. <laughs> Our dead are grateful. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> do you think I've got? Do you, do you think I'm going to win? The, I mean, I might win for all I know. We what put a long, the fun in funeral. What a long, Our dead strange trip it's been. <laughs> <laughs> What's your thoughts on Halloween here, Rick? Look, uh, what are you wearing for Halloween? What are you wearing for Halloween this year? You've never yeah, worn a... You no, have never he's a beer vendor a, at the Big E. Come on. No. Yeah, no. I, that, you that's have costume. never worn a costume in your life. What about... I can say that when I was a kid, yeah. What did and you... What, you what know, was your, at other times, What but, was your What was no. your go-to costume? They've all been different. I don't well, dress up with one. Pick one. Pick one. <laughs> pick a costume. <laughs> Peter, it used to be easy. I used to, to wear. I used to wear my uniform. What is it? I can't hear him. I used to wear my. Why, don't you, why can't he well, hear you? Because they can't put the. I ears used to on. wear my uniform, Bob. Put, 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 oh, when Bob, I worked at the Holyoke PD or something, I yeah. used to just wear my Bobby, uniform on. Put them on like this. Oh, I Thank can you. put them on backwards. Or I can hit the speaker button and you know broadcast myself over the speaker in there. Oh, I get it. Can you do that? That would actually be really helpful. Oh. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> not the whole time. Oh, okay, fine. So get this, everybody. 
I am going to play Bella Lugosi's Dead. Have you heard of this? I've heard of Bella Lugosi, yes. Bella, who do you know who Bella Lugosi is? He was the original yeah, yeah. Dracula. Who is Bella Lugosi? Yeah. Is it, Dracula. Is it an American actor. Yes, he played Dracula. Yeah. Dracula. And what in the films he was but it was it was early silent films, I think, yeah. Bella Lugosi. And he was known like Boris Karloff. Does yeah. the name Boris Karloff mean that anything? also yes. brings about does the does the did any of you guys ever watch Mystery Science Theater three thousand? Yes. I don't the, know it at all. The, there was and so it's Mystery They heckle old bad they heckle movies. They heckle bad movies that like there are some like decent actors in. Bela Lugosi was in one of them. I believe Cesar Romero was in one of one of these. It's like the lost planet and half the movie is them climbing up a mountain. It's it's ridiculous. Like yeah, it it makes zero sense as to why this ever got filmed or approved. You mean they were just going up a mountain, like like l- the, l- yeah? L- there's there's yeah. fog Rick and, Rick all around. And Bob go to the top. It's the era of the drive-in movie, so that right. all these B movies they're all in the public domain, and we used to do a show on public access That's called right. Didn't your Drive-In do, Schlock Theater. Did, bro, did were you part of that? That drive-in schlock theater show. I thought Jerry Tracy's brother was. This was where, where they. Oh no! Locally, they, it was the two ghouls. The two ghouls. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Bella Lugosi w- had this great career uh, in horror films. Mm-hmm. Then he, the sound talkies came in, and I don't think his career went very far. And so this is considered the first glam, the the Bauhaus, B A U H U S, like oh, yeah. Bauhaus. It's yes, a kind German. of German art. I, I think Bauhaus was a is was a movement in Germany that um, like uh, for for arts and and whatever. But the Bauhaus is a band that really was the, is considered the first glam rock band. The first glam rock band. Have you not heard of Bauhaus, either one of you? No. So I'm going to play you a bit of their glam rock song, one of the first glam rock songs ever. I never got a schedule I box on playing that. Alice song. Cooper was glam rock. But no. he's no. not he's glam rock. No. He's the precursor to glam rock. Or, or, or Gene Simmons is the precursor to glam rock, right? What? Would Gene Simmons be the precursor to glam rock? No. 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 What? What? Why not? Why not? Because they're dressed up glamorously. I call this mean. a glamorous costume. <laughs> I'm t- oh, I. That doesn't I, mean. I that doesn't this mean. You could that also argue that he that he's he's the precursor for goth rock because he's dressed sort of gothically. I but see. that that's also not true. Uh huh. Well, folks, I'm going to play you Bella Lugosi's Dead. This is the first, according to some music, musical historians, the first glam rock song. Now, it goes on for nine minutes, so I've asked Peter to only give us two minutes of it. It's really... Oh my Bella God. Lugosi's Dead's only three minutes yeah. long, Bob. Do you remember Johnny Carson having Monty Rock on his show years ago? No. The older folks would re- re- recognize this. Uh, yeah. Is that what that button in the middle does? Yeah. Monty Rock used to come on. uh, He was a a person. He had had no talent whatsoever. And he was, (laughs) not that I'm equating you, because you are a guitarist and you've got talent. But Johnny Carson used to have Monty Rock. And then he had Tiny Tim on. And both Tiny Tim and Monty Rock, this sort of reminds me of, being visited by doesn't it seem rather strange isn't this the strangest show you've ever done with me <laughs> usually <laughs> our shows where it's going to get really serious though at seven o'clock because we've got the chair of the music department of westfield state coming on to talk real music and in actuality he's a prophet is he a professor yes, he of is. yours mr well he, he doesn't have he doesn't teach any of my classes uh, i see but he is in charge of you at the university mr correct Chris. Right? Yes. Yeah. So he's going to come on and we're going to talk um, all kinds of different kinds of music at, at 7 o'clock. But so at any rate, this is Bella Lugosi's Dead. All righty. <laughs>
Underwriting is brought to you by Boise Cascade Distribution, providing products and services needed for building material dealers, home improvement centers, and industrial customers. They offer everything from engineered wood and plywood to direct stucking and railing, James Hardy siding, and Adventech subfloor. Located at 33 Fowler Street Extension in Westfield and on the web at bc.com, they are committed to providing quality products, great service, convenience, and value. This is Ken Stomsky from Ken's Den on WCPC 15 and 89.5 FM, Tuesdays, 8 to 10. Community Radio, 89.5 WSKB. Live from Studio 120 at Westfield Technical Academy, this is WCPC Channel 15 and 89.5 FM, WSKB Westfield. Wow. Now, that was Bauhaus. Now, Bauhaus was a, a school, a German school of architecture, I think, and, um, and furniture. But Bauhaus, the band, Bauhaus were an English rock band formed in Northampton, England in 1978. Known for their dark image and gloomy sound, Bauhaus are one of the pioneers of Gothic rock, although they mixed many genres, including dub, glam, I got it wrong again, dub, glam, rock, psychedelic, and funk. Okay? What in the blue hell was that? Gothic rock. Gothic rock. That was just really... (laughs) Bob, I I did an alternative show on WTCC back in the 90s. Right. Back when we had the music that was was on WSKB on there. Oh, TCC had stick. Um, I wouldn't have played that song in a million years. You couldn't have paid me to play that song. It well, was, interesting. Horrible. Well, interestingly you enough, pay Gene Simmons to play that song no, either. No, you don't think so. <laughs> Apparently, oh the 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 gothic element of this song led to the gothic, uh, the, the the revolution, the gothic revolution, where people were. Would you call Gene Simmons gothic in its no. way? I would say that maybe his m- appearance might appear a little bit gothic, mm-hmm. in the sense that it is black and white, right? But in no other way. No, no. And so this gothic rock, and you called it doom. I rock. called it. I, I would say that was more of doom rock. There, you can classify anything as anything nowadays. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So like there are there are things like doom metal where they where they take they like will play music and it's like like slow funeral dirgy and it's like yeah okay and it, it's called doom metal uh-huh. there are covers of iron maiden songs that are actually done by a doom metal band there, it's not ever so, it's not something sure. that i would ever, ever listen to sure but like so w- within that same vein i would classify this as doom rock essentially yeah because there there were instruments in there that i would say would classify it as rock music and they they use in that there there is this like synthesizer stuff. Yeah, the polysynthesis. Did poly did, stuff did like they that, yeah. did you guys use? Did I mean here I am you guys? Did Kiss use <laughs> synthesizer? <laughs> hey, at least you got the band right. No, Kiss never used synthesizers in the way that like Rush did. Um, but, but they did use synthesizers later on in their later on in their shows and stuff like that. I don't know that they did. I think I think if they did, then in live they never had someone play stuff like that in live shows. Mm-hmm. If they did, then it would have been pre-recorded stuff. Oh, maybe it was. I would like to take a moment to give a shout out to my grandmother for providing me with these mucklucks that have keep kept my feet warm. Wait a minute, on, your, on the, your, gr- your, on gr- your grandmother is responsible for your boots? No, no, my my socks underneath. They, Look at those. These are the comfiest socks ever. Are there, what are like, they, yeah, well, I, they're like, you know how much I love socks. They're like this v- ultra wooly material on right. the inside. Right. They kept me so warm on this 39 degree commute. Yeah, yeah. The, um, Mucklucks, did she buy those or make those? Well, she's from California. I, she bought them because uh, she is, and I, I say this with love, but she's kind of under the influence that we don't know how to survive the cold up here. <laughs> All right. It is getting cold, isn't it? Yeah, it was 36 uh, degrees on the drive in. What did, did you take a, a ride to look at the trees this year this week um Rick? No. 
Do, do, have you taken a gander at how beautiful the, oh, the colors oh. I've heard were gorgeous? Yes. Oh my God! Finally. Wonder, when is the peak season for this? It was now. It was probably yesterday. Do you think so? Well, oh. this week is supposed to be really nice out. So. Yeah. As I drive south, then if you're going to keep the 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 fall, and we're going to drive south, I'm going to have perpetual autumn. Right? Would that work that way? <laughs> Not necessarily. No? No. No? It all depends on the weather. depends on a um, number of factors. You know, if any, and any factors that I might be interested in? <laughs> no, not really. Not Just, really. Not no, really. No. Right. No. Yeah. Ra- the, the weather is the most um, important factor in the foliage. How much rain do we have? Yes. How much this? Right. Depends right. on, you know, right. how hard the rain came down. If it, like, last weekend... Oh my God! There's, 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 we had that big downpour. Tree. One tree just came. All the all the leaves came off in that one storm. Yeah. There's a tree that I have in my front yard. Um, it's a Japanese maple tree. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with those ones. Oh, oh yeah, I have every, that. Every every year, it typically it'll turn a bright red around Halloween. Right. Because growing up, we always had a picture in within our Halloween costume. Right. Right in front of it, and always bright red. And then the first rain that we had after it turned. All the leaves were on the ground. All in one in one in day. one go. Yeah. In one go. Yeah. Um, it seemed that like my apple trees did that this year. That they yeah. just sort of like fell. My birch trees, the yellow from the birch trees. Mm. Oh gosh, I've done some reels this week in front of that. <laughs> but uh, mentioning the rain, we got to give a shout out to our works Westfield because we were all set to do Art Oberfest this this weekend with these great artists, fine art and um, the the uh, authors and 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 we were all downtown looking forward to it. The rain forecast made it impossible for Artworks to do it, and you know as we were talking. Uh, Eric McDowell from Artworks came over during the day because we stayed open on that day. And he w- he was saying, I wanted it to pour. Once we made the decision, I wanted it to pour so somebody sa- so somebody wouldn't complain about the idea that, well, we called an event off and it could have been happening. Because that happened for most of the summer. Isn't that the interesting thing? Yeah, yeah. That we have had, what, there are seven or eight weekends of rain? Yeah. What do you do? What do you do, Gene Simmons, on a weekend when it rains? Wait a minute. Well, let's celebrate the fact that you got it right for the first time this show. (laughs) Ah, I just I just spiked myself. uh, I'm 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 getting a where I'm getting serious because uh, we've got we've got your professor coming on. Yes. Yeah, we have to Um, get serious. No, no. Uh, But um, Gene, what do you do on, on a rainy day? Well. Max. I, are you asking Gene or are you asking Max? I'm Max. Max. So on a rainy day, typically I'll stay in my dorm and I'll just strum away on my guitar. I, I might uh, practice some tunes that my band is working on. Speaking of which, my band is actually uh, playing this Friday. The weather's looking good for that. Uh, right. uh, Where are you going to be? That's uh, L- the Ludlow Show, October 27th at 6 p.m. That's going to be at the Vanished Valley Brewing Company in Ludlow. It's the final music event of their calendar, so we are closing out the season for Vanished What is Valley. the name of the band? Uh, Prodigal Swine. Prodigal swine, and yeah, you know, you remember that from the last yeah, time? no, yeah. I don't remember from the last time. <laughs> did you remember it? Yeah. Yes, of course you remember. Remember, it. I had the sweatshirt. You did. That's right. Yeah. Okay, so um, and you know, vanished uh, b- the vanished brewery. Yeah, yeah, the one on Route Twenty. Yeah, yeah, that's on Thirty-two. Wonderful. Thirty-two. Wonderful. Thirty-two, and yeah, and Lola. Yeah. Hey, I heard the good yeah. news also in Westfield. Do you know Westfield has right now? I think four breweries and i think there's a fifth one coming up there's a new brewery coming yeah. to town yeah Bob's there joined the jehovah's witness yeah yeah have, have you heard the good news <laughs> Dude, really yes to there's, where is this and what it is, is it is up on appermont way up mm. by the airport is mm. uh bright ideas westfield bright ideas yeah westfield. it is there where is it it is their second location right up on appermont way up by the airport barnes is it in yeah. its own building or yeah. Yeah. Not within the... It's the, in the no. airport. It's, it's the airport. old Berkshire Industries Yeah, buildings. the old Berkshire Industries Oh, building, I know yes. it well. Oh, my gosh. Oh, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Well, let's go from the sublime to the ridiculous. We'll take a moment and um, 
Uh, no, this is not the ridiculous. This is actually sublime, but it's Halloween. This is Louis Armstrong. Do you, do you have you heard of Louis Armstrong? Who? Yeah. Yeah. Can you tell me something about him? Uh, he was a famous bicyclist. Uh, no, sorry, that was Lance Armstrong. Um, <laughs> he landed on the moon. Nope, sorry, that was Neil Armstrong. Um, <laughs> he was a famous Name another Armstrong. player. He was uh, a, yeah, um, can we name uh, He was a, a, pla a, a rubber toy. Oh, sorry, that's Stretch Armstrong. Um, you have another Armstrong, Rick? Is there yeah. another Armstrong? No. Yeah. There's got to be another Armstrong. We've named all the Armstrongs, <laughs> except for at least Luke. all the famous ones. All the fam Lance, um, Lance, Neil, and Stretch, um, and then so Louis Armstrong was a famous trumpet player. Yeah. Um, I believe you. His most, I mean, I would say his most well known is um, "What a Wonderful World." Ah, interesting. You, that you what think a that wonderful world. world. Yeah, yeah. And he's got that like throaty voice. My my Eng that same English teacher could do a. He did so many impressions. It was he did insane. The he, English he teacher. He could do Louis Armstrong. He he could do a Louis Armstrong impression only for a few seconds because it's really hard to do. But it, it, but yeah. Wild. Do you know um, Louis Armstrong actually um, was one of the the great the greatest musicians of all time. And he had a long, very long, long career. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is one of his early numbers. There's actually a film that accompanies this. And it is, um, it's called uh, Skeletons in the Closet. Mm. And he tells a story. It's a great Halloween story, so I thought I'd play it. Actually, Alice Cooper has a song called Skeletons in the Closet because I was going to play that. <laughs> but then I said, nah, we have to get off this gl uh, gl glam rock at the time. Oh. I would say, I know, it's not glam rock. Heavy metal. We're, we got to get off, so I'm going to play hard rock. to Clinton. Bow, bow. Hard rock. This is hard rock. Oh, this is hard rock? No, Kiss is hard rock. And Out that's different than is, heavy, heavy yes, metal. Yes, better than heavy metal. Different than heavy metal. Yes, yeah. heavy metal is like Metallica. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like multiple, like you multiple bass drums, like lots of bass in uh -huh. the not not just yeah. Right. Right. Well, um, uh, Louis Armstrong is far from that. Let's listen to Louis Armstrong. Skeletons in the closet. Boy, don't you go in there. Come out of there, boy! Don't you know that house is haunted? There's an old deserted mansion on an old forgotten road where the better ghosts and goblins always hang out. One night they threw a party in a manner a la mode and they cordially invited all the gang out. At a dark, bewitching hour, when the fun was loud and hearty, a notorious wallflower became the life of the party. Mm, the spooks were having their midnight fling. The merrymaking was in full swing. They shrieked themselves into a cheerful train. When the skeleton in the closet started to dance, now a goblin giggled with fiendish glee. A shout rang out from a big banshee. Amazement was in every ghostly glance. When the skeleton in the closet started to dance, all the witches were in stitches. While his steps made rhythmic thumps And then nearly dropped that broomstick When he tried to do the bumps You never heard such an oily laughter Such hilarious groan When the skeleton in the closet rattled his bones
Underwriting for Community Radio is provided by the YMCA of Greater Westfield. Every day the YMCA strengthens the community through programs and services focused on youth development, healthy living, and social responsibility. For all the Y's many programs and services, visit us on the web at www.westfieldymca.org. The YMCA, 67 Court Street in downtown Westfield. We're more than a gym. We're a cause. Hi, this is Harry Rock, host of Rock on Westfield, every fourth Wednesday at 8 a.m. Tune in for my view of this place I call home. Community Radio. 89.5 WSKB. Live from Studio 120 at Westfield Technical Academy, this is WCPC Channel 15 at 89.5 FM, WSKB Westfield. Wow, it is our Halloween show. Be afraid, be afraid. I am here at the be desk. Be very afraid. Yeah, I'm here at the desk. With All right, Bob, I'm taking my break. I'll be back in a while. Uh, you guys right. talk amongst yourselves. All right, Ma- Maxwell. <laughs> Look at Rick. <laughs> Rick just gave you the maybe, evil yeah, eye. Maybe Rick wants to go out for a break as well. <laughs> Maximilian Dewey is here as um, I thought Alice Cooper, but it turns out he's Gene Simmons today. And I am, um, I've got to come up for a, a name for my, my Undertaker outfit. The Which Undertaker. The, my, my Undertaker. No, you, just, you need another, you know. Oh, God, help me. I can't dig them you know, up. You know, you know, Bob. When you said you were coming as the Undertaker, I yeah, I thought you were going to be wearing tights and uh, oh. I thought you were going to be the wrestling Undertaker. No, so no. no one is ever going to see me in tights. Hey, no, I, I, I got right now. <laughs> no one is ever going to see me in tights. So I think we probably have a lot of, of of people who have not seen Wild Tuesday before, and they're wondering. Oh what God! The heck does is this going go, on? Does this go on every week? Well, no. We have um, decent. Well, this has been a wonderful conversation, but we have conversations about all kinds of things, and this actually is a celebration of Halloween. And I, I wondered, where does Halloween come from? Do you do you have any sense? It's all Hallows Jer- Eve. Yeah, it's All Hallows Eve, which is um, it's a, a, it's a celebration of like the. The dead souls. It's it's actually a, it's actually a Christian holiday. Yeah, it's a, it's really? All Hallows Eve. Yes, and yeah. the, what, and because November first is All, all Souls Day, Day or All Saints Day. All depends. Saints Day. When is All right. Souls Day? Is All Souls Day the Same day, day before? No, yeah. I think it's the day before or something. Because one of the days is a triumphant day. Well, All, all so- Saints Day. All Saints Day, whereas All, all Souls, souls is-, is about honoring the dead i actually i think you're thinking mi- mixing that with the day of the dead i think the day it's of all, the dead is a, similar i thought that was like it's all souls day is the second of november this year the second of november oh yeah so it's all Hallows eve is october <laughs> 31st all saints day is november 1st all souls day is november 2nd right there we go okay That's it's it. a yeah it's in and uh, actually, Halloween has its has its roots back to um, the pagans. Celtic. I heard and this, the, and the Celtics. Uh, well, the Celtics were pagans. Yeah, they they, they um, the pagans actually. There's not uh, they're not uh, an evil organization or anything like that. They they um, worship Mother Earth. I remember. So the other, you know, that's the that's the, the basketball whole team is actually difference. called the Celtics, not the Celtics. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it has it, it. It has its its roots back to um, ancient Ireland. Was there a thing the that uh, James always talks about Halloween as being in the in in the pagan faith, like the closest, like the it's the the closest of life and death are together, and it's a permeable thing that you could cross over from one land to the other. Is yes. that, that, that's that's just a mirror, Bob. It's just you just oh, oh, cross no. over You've into watched, the world of backwards. You have watched too many science fiction right. films. I've, I've watched too much comedy. Co- too much comedy. <laughs> and, and they would dre- they would dress up in the macabre style of things mm-hmm. and masks and everything like that. So yeah. the, the spirits would think that they were one of them. Ah, yes. And they wouldn't bother them. Yeah. And very similarly... In, I, I'm thinking Mexico, the Day of the Dead in Mexico, happens That's around the same time. Yes. And that happens 
uh, what they do is they actually dress as skeletons. Yes. And you'll see it in that wonder. Have you seen that cartoon? Oh, you got it. You guys have got to see this Coco? cartoon, Coco. And, yes. Oh, um, have you seen it? I, I've uh, I actually sung some excerpts from it in my chorus class in high school. Really? Yeah. Oh wow! That um, what's the so what's it the was it was a medley. Uh, Remember me is one. Remember me, yeah. though I have to say goodbye. Remember me. Yeah. Yeah, it's exactly right. Hi. I, that one won. That one won. Uh, didn't that one win an award or something? I think it won Oscar. I think it did. Yeah. I, think it did. I was watching. You know, I I go online and I watch. Disney, uh, this is the closest I get to weird, I suppose. But I maybe <laughs> this not. This is? Maybe. Uh, this is the, the uh, where our show goes from from normal to weird, to weird. To weird. No. Uh, my, my, we're already, we've no. been there since oh, 602. Oh, no. <laughs> been so, there since I walked on. So I think that, that in, in Disney World right now, they're celebrating with Coco. And they I, I watched it the other night on Instagram, one of those feeds from Disney World and there were skeletons dancing and yeah. it was so lovely with this th th it's really a, a yeah. wonderful film yeah. this co this Coco so yeah. I recommend that I you also know Duncan's also celebrating with Coco oh listen Dunkin I heard Donuts? something about Duncan Donuts uh <laughs> yeah yeah that that pumpkin thing oh I think we talked about it last week that pumpkin drink that they have has so much sugar in it that it will get you flying even more than that you know it will it will rouse you up even more than this yeah oh yeah it's coca-cola do you always have a coca-cola in the morning yeah you do well, most of the time um when i come on here yes because it is early yeah it's very early right right um but most of the time i do have it later in the day just gotcha. to keep me going kind of drink. Yeah, yeah, it, it really is. Mm -hmm. I wanted to recommend to everyone, I did a, another reel on it the other night. Uh, uh, this There is a great show on Netflix that you guys have got to see. It's called The Fall of the House of Usher. Do you remember who wrote that book? The Fall of the House of Usher. Pete does. <laughs> Pete, you no. know, the you have no idea. I'll give you a clue. I think I, I'm going to give I think you. I read it in high school. Yes, you did. I've never, read it. <laughs> never, never more. Finish this sent. Finish this phrase. The pit and the pendulum. The black adder. No, black. Aldrin. No, meow. Cat. cat. The black cat. The cask of a macchiato. There we go. Oh, it, that, that was an Ask Schools Match Wits question. Oh, yeah, oh, that's right. You were on Schools Match Wits. Um, we got that question how wrong, about, <laughs> How about Murder in the Rue? Morgue. That's an Iron Maiden song. I, know uh, I gotcha. Who wrote all of those pieces? Edgar Allan Poe. Edgar Allan Poe. And so this program, uh, The Fall of the House of the Usher, of Usher, is... Produced, directed, and written by Mike Flanagan, one of the uh, masters of the horror genre. And it is Long one of the- Long cousin of Edgar Allan. Yeah, eight or nine episodes of, it's like Succession. You know that if yeah. you like Succession on oh. television, that series, it is very similar in that it is a pharmaceutical company that is the lead and um, it's how each member of the family of the House of Usher gets done in, basically. Mm. It is so well done. I've counted, I've got one more episode, I've counted five times that I actually was horrified as I watched this television show. So if you're looking for a scary yet literate, and I bet this, this is going to win some kind of awards. Oh, look, at we've got... Oh, this cleanse our palate, everyone. It is Professor, it is Professor Ed Orgill from Westfield State. Hey, Ed. I think he's still muted. Oh, he's muted. He's he's muted. He, video off. We got to get him to. Yeah, he's got to put his video on probably, but he's <coughs> right there. He looks like he's in some warm island somewhere on like the ocean. What the smart yeah, man? Yeah. There we are, Ed. Be afraid. Be very afraid. <laughs> Greetings, everyone. Greetings. Hi. You missed the first hour. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> trouble signing on for some reason. The passcode didn't work. I was trying to get on oh. my uh, iPad, and I had to use the link, I... the direct link in the email, because I tried entering the numbers, and it just ah. didn't work. Oh, oh the okay. numbers didn't work. Ah, uh, gotcha. Um, Ed, we are celebrating <laughs> Halloween today. <laughs> Um, so I have a guest on. Do you know who this is over to the right-hand side over here? Well, that's Gene Simmons. <laughs> <laughs> Bob, Bob thought, thought it was, it was a- Alice Cooper. <laughs> All this time I thought it was Alice Cooper. I, I was doing this whole thing about Alice Cooper, and I apparently I've conflated every uh, heavy rock. Metal? What is it? Heavy Heavy metal and hard rock. Hard right? rock. It, I've conflated them all into one. And what was it? Glam, bur- and glam, glam rock? rock? Glam yeah. rock. Yeah. They- <laughs> now, do you teach glam rock, heavy metal, or um, any of that up at Westfield State, where this oh. man is the chair of the music department, and he is also a doctor of music? I want you to know, we're not playing around here. Everywhere. Why are you pointing to me? Uh huh. Why are no. you pointing to me? Ed, it. That's pointing Ed. That, that would way. be oh, yeah. Ed. Oh, that would yeah. be Ed. <laughs> where is it? Oh, where do I point? Over yeah. here. There we are. Yeah. He's yeah. he's Ed. nice and he's well, nice and I warm and. Comfy in his house, so. Yeah. Ed, do you yeah. do you teach so any I of think, that? Um, there's, I don't, you know, the, the world rock and rolls every day and wants to party all night anyway. You know, <laughs> you know, I'm 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 quoting uh, one of Kiss's greatest hit yeah. songs. You know, and I'm thinking. I, it was it was a paraphrase actually. Uh, was it? You, know, uh, you have a right. Rock, rock and roll, roll all night, night and party every, every day. day. Uh, uh, I think they say that. Come, How many we, times do they say that in that? Tune? I believe we say it seventy eight times per concert. <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah, it's it's said several times. Is there any other words to that song? Um. Well, the night's begun and you want some fun. Do you think you're gonna find it? Um. Okay, so yeah. I guess there is. Yeah, there, okay. there's a couple verses. Paul wrote the verses. Yeah. I wrote the chorus. Yeah, but anyway, to answer your question, Bob, I think the world has heard that tune enough. I don't need to teach it myself. <laughs> oh, okay. Bob, you don't understand. Miss Dr. Orgill's laying the foundation so that people can make music like that. Is that correct, New Dr. Music Orgill? Like that. Would you say, um, would you say well, as, as the chair of the music department at Westfield State University, Westfield, Massachusetts, you could go to westfield.ma.edu for all the information about Westfield State. But, uh, Ed, would you say that that is the purpose or the overarching goal of the music department at Westfield State? What to party every day and rock and roll? All no, night? to no, l- wait, lay the foundation. No, to lay, oh, the, lay the foundation. The foundations of yes. writing that song. Yeah. Well, um, that's I guess yeah. We do. We focus on music literacy. That's one of our uh, one of our goals is to is to help our our students uh, achieve music literacy. Yeah. And so, um, yeah. So I guess yeah. And if a that, person that would be, is uh, that'd be true. If a person is literate about music, and you. We've had several conversations. Um, Ed is on the board of Westfield, and we can so I see him often. Uh, and indeed, we even have a concert this Friday night at Westfield on weekends, 103, 105 Elm Street. It's our Up Close and Musical series, and you've got to see that. And um, I'm going to invite Gene Simmons is going to come on, on that evening and meet you because personally, you know who this is over here? This is one of your students. Did you know oh, that? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I I do. Yeah. Do you yeah, know Max? Know. Have you entered? I do. Has he introduced himself yeah. to you? We, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. We we had a conversation about this very conversation <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> were you? W- wait a minute. You were rehearsing. Bob, he actually did show prep. <laughs> you you were rehearsing the show yesterday. Is that how it worked? I, I asked him if he was ready, and he said, "Yeah." Uh. <laughs> that was essentially. It. That's pretty pretty much it. It was yeah. <laughs> All right. That's it. That does pretty much sum it up, Max. You're right. <laughs> oh, Thank you. funny, funny. So, but but in terms of music education, my education seemed to have stopped uh, right after the Beatles. I gotta gotta say, and then and, and unfortunately, then I'm really not a literate person. I mean, I as you know, my I have I'm able to hold the best. 
I, I'm able to have a conversation with a man who's as smart as a whip on everything musical, Ed Orgel, and hold my own. In a sense, we, we've had some great conversations about jazz and, and popular music and big band, et cetera, et cetera. And, and, but yet, I have this lack of knowledge of, of what makes rock and roll rock and roll, what makes rock heavy metal, what makes heavy metal glam rock, et cetera, et cetera, folk rock, that, that whole history of music. And I wondered, like in high school, where you stop, you, you stop learning about history right around the time of the Greeks because the, the teacher doesn't, you don't have enough time in the year. So we didn't get beyond the Greeks in my history class in high school, so I don't know anything beyond that. And in, in world history class. But so, Ed, the question is, in order to be literate about music and the history of music, do you teach beyond what what's the the focus is early music? Well, tell me about that. If you were teaching a history of music class, how does it work? Is it is it defined like in periods, in genres, in in transitions from one music to another tell me i think i think that depends on the instructor um because um you know every by the way bob everybody has holes in their knowledge about music um i certainly do oh um, i agree How do you, you i mean um i and that's one of the beauties of of the of it being of a subject of study is that um music like whether well, it's other subjects like this but um it, it it offers a person the opportunity for lifetime growth. There's always something to learn. So you know, there, it's impossible to know it all. Uh, uh -huh. you, know, you know, you run into a lot of types in music who seem to think they do, but sure. um, on occasion. <laughs> uh, but uh, even even those folks, who, they're the most knowledgeable individuals are still, um, you know, there's still something for them to learn. So you can kind of march through life and always count on something learning something, new, something. yeah right so yeah so um but generally um people who teach music history uh they can focus on genre that's one way to do it um uh where you know you you talk about opera and then talk about symphony and uh, or you know and and other genres uh string quartets for instance mm -hmm. uh, chamber music mm -hmm. um and and that actually that's a good way to teach it I think in a lot of ways because it can uh, uh, create variety um, in a different way. Yeah. Uh, another way to do it is, is chronological. So you, you know you start out in the medieval period and and move on to Renaissance and Baroque and then classical and Romantic and and then finally 20th century and and contemporary and uh, that is um, you know that's that's a typical way to teach music history. Uh, it makes a lot of sense and it makes, you know, some people can see or uh, experience, you know, in, in, you know, in, in the class itself, how, how, uh, how, uh, how the uh, periods um, kind of play out. So that's another approach to it. But even in one of, you know, a 15 week, three day a week uh, class, you know, right. um, one's not going to cover everything. In fact, you, you're, you're only going to scratch the surface. You know, it's it's a subject that's worthy of a lifetime of study. So just a term of music history is is not going to it's not going to cover very much. But sure. hopefully it'll it'll pique your interest and and keep keep you interested in in uh, in experiencing other now, music. Now we you, know, and, you mentioned genres, and I'm wondering because I've been I've been focused in the last month or so on Stephen Sondheim. The Broadway composer who was is really avant garde, and, and and every show is a little different, and I learned everything about how he writes. And um, there is uh, there's a great Library of Congress six hour interview with Stephen about his compositions, and it's really, in a sense, esoteric, if I might use that word. But I learned a lot by listening to how he composes, etc. My and he in one of his his songs he says something about give us something new, and I wondered 
both. I, I'll, I'll ask uh, Max as well as you, but um, is there, is, what is new to you in music? And are there new genres? Had, did, did, did heavy metal end with, what followed heavy metal or, or whatever? And, but, but from you, Grunge. from your standpoint, Ed, you you're you're on you could be on the classical track the jazz track the pop pop music track but could you just sort of talk about that that transition to the next stage are we writing new music today and is it different and what makes it different boy that's pretty good huh hmm, hmm. yeah well um yeah i mean i i suppose i think there is in, it, you know, right off the bat, um, you you mentioned jazz, and um, I think one thing that happened in the latter part of the 20th century is that jazz music and classical music kind of moved much closer together, and and I'm not even sure that that the uh, they're they're both art music, and they're and they're they can be wonderfully complex, and mm. and uh, and the, and those two genres have. Uh, in some respects kind of moved together. Um, I mean, it started with Gershwin and, and Paul Whiteman, you know, with right. Rhapsody in Blue and, and, um, right. and, and incidentally, early in the 20th century. Yeah. Go, go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, no, I was just going to say that Paul Whiteman is a big band. So you've got big band, uh, jazz yeah. and classical all kind of like moshing sure. together. Yeah, that was 100 years ago. But, yeah. you know, that was the first... It, uh, uh, and then, you know, the music of Darius Mio kind of followed suit and there was, you know, third stream music. But that was all sort of uh, it was it was a, quite some time ago, but that became more mainstream. And um, gradually the anti jazzites in the classical world, there's a lot of them back then and it has a lot to do with. Um, with oppression and racism, actually, is why jazz was kind of frowned upon a lot in uh, classical uh, music circles in wow. some respects um, early on. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, that's not so common uh, these days, and people that are coming out of conservatories now are are, are, are fascinated with jazz. And, and so now the jazz has, has had a heavy influence on on classical style or what you might call art music style it's 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 confusing to say classical because at the same time uh you know people who classify music as classical are referring to basically what what i might call 20th century or, or, or contemporary art music or art music mm. um instrumental art music um mm. but classical refers to a specific period of time as well right so in, in, in music, the classical period is from roughly 1750 to around 1810 really? or so. Really? Oh. Um, um, right around the time Beethoven started writing his la the latter string quartets and some of his more romantic sounding music. Um, and so, you know, starting with um, Mozart, you know, Mozart is, is firmly in the classical period, but but Bach really isn't, right? Bach's a Baroque composer, so oh, and 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 Brahms, for instance, isn't a classical composer. He, he's from the Romantic period, but yet we refer to them all as classical music, which kind of creates a little bit. So does so, so classical but, then mold into at any point in the history of music where we've got rock? heavy rock people writing what some of us neophytes would say as classical music. You know, I'm, I'm wondering, does, is, there, is there a meatloaf or a Gene Simmons writing classical music, what I would assume is classical music, highfalutin music, I suppose. I'm, I'm trying to come up with a word other than classical. Some of these artists, Bob, have written pieces in other genres, too. Yeah, well, well, that's what I'm talking. Yeah, <clears throat> somebody who comes to mind in, in, in that comes out of popular music who's writing um, symphonic music, if that's what you're talking about, would be Danny Elfman. Danny I mean, Elfman, somebody who's tremendously successful, right, in both areas. Yeah, 
Kip Winger um, did it too from the band, band the the heavy whole, metal Boingo, band. Boingo, Boingo in the eighties, they were amazing. Yeah, you ever hear that band? What's the name of it? Boingo, Boingo, Boingo. Oingo, Oingo, yeah. Boingo. They wrote, they wrote the song. They did the song "Weird Science," Bob. I don't know yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Do you know that song, um, Max? Do you know? We, uh, I'm Boingo? not familiar with that song. No, no. no. Uh, oh yeah, you, Gray uh, Matter is another out, one. That was a that was a song that uh, that made it into my circle of friends when I was in high school. That band was quite popular. They were out of L.A. and and really um, very eclectic and and. Uh, uh, listen to and, it. Yeah. Really good, but then Danny Elfman became a movie composer, and he writes amazing. Stuff. Oh yeah, it's the amazing. night before uh, Christmas. The no, the uh, nightmare before band. Christmas is Danny Elfman. Yeah. yeah. Oh, listen to that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I I wanted to ask. Um, it was a title track for a movie, Bob. Yeah. Oh yeah. Really wild. Um, what, You've never seen Weird Science? No, I have not. Well, that doesn't uh, that no, actually that, doesn't no, surprise no, me. No, no. Um, I was watching. Uh, I was watching some musical film. I was watching Singing in the Rain or something. You know, <laughs> live. But, but Ed, th- when when you look at someone like um, Gene Simmons, or actually, let's talk about Max Dewey. <laughs> Max Dewey comes to Westfield State, and you have stretched his boundaries in a, in a certain way, right? Haven't, haven't you? Yeah. I mean, your music, well, we'll speak, you speak to it first, I, I and mean, then Ed will. So, yeah, I mean, I came in to, to the music program having, like, no classical guitar training. I, like, literally, my audition, I played Tears in Heaven by Eric Clapton, and I played Iron Maiden's Power Slave on electric guitar. I played them both on electric guitar. I didn't even own a classical style guitar um, at the beginning of, the sc- of my freshman year. And so since then, I've learned classical pieces. I've memorized classical pieces, and I have some of them under my belt. And so I can like literally pull them out when I'm at my grandparents' house and, and play them, and they love it. And they're, they're like, oh, my God. It's, 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 and they, like, it, it honestly, it, it makes my day to see their reactions to it. And like, I, I, nev- I never saw myself as someone who would like be able to do that i never saw myself as someone who would like learn how to do that i i always sort of saw myself with an electric guitar and never with an acoustic but that is that has definitely changed hmm hmm and what do you how do you respond to that because i bet you hear that a lot from the students at at the university well i can't take credit for that myself (laughs) i have to give it to my my uh, colleague and friend John Mason, who teaches guitar at Westfield State University. Uh, I mean, I, I can't. You know, I, I'm a part of a team that 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 helps um, young people like Max expand their musical horizons. Right. And, uh, right. and I I know that John John's just he's a fantastic person and a, and a wonderful musician and and teacher and um, you know all of his students. Um, I, I've yet to find one that that um, that didn't in, enjoy their lessons with them and 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 feel that they're getting a lot out of it. So, um, and well, I, I, I actually haven't had the pleasure of having Max in any classes that I teach. And, um, so we haven't got around to that yet, have we? No, but, um, that's right. Yeah. But that's that's um, you know, it, it really it. I have to say, it warms my heart to hear him say that because that's that's what we're all about at Westfield State. You know, it yeah. is to. It's to provide options and, and expand horizons, you know, where uh, a lot of people think that, that music education at, at, at institutions like the one that, that Max and I are at on a daily basis are, are limiting people, you know, and, or, or, or channeling people to certain places. And, and uh, that's really not true. You know, and there's a big misnomer about music theory that it's a set of rules and it's not really a set of rules. It never has been. Right. Music lines. theory is is a is a way of describing um, tonality. It's a it's a way of describing how music has been written in the past and what the great composers did. It's a way of observing what they did. Um, and but you know the the uh, environment that we're in of school and its connection with 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 secondary school. It, it tends to um, create this um, false equivalency of, of grammar school rules associated with the classes that you take, right? And that's really not what it's about at all. It's about 
um, expanding horizons and, and um, showing, uh, you know, illuminating uh, parts of, 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 of um, music theory and history that, uh, that are probably not, uh, not visible to, yeah. to, the, to our students when they well, first come in. Well, so. I wondered then, Max, do you take what you've learned in class and as you compose for your band, his, the name of his band is Prodigal Swine. Correct. And Prodigal <laughs> yeah. Oh, you like that. <laughs> I do, yeah. <laughs> Prodigal Swine is, um, are, are any of the, mu is the music that you're writing now informed by your classical, beginning to be classical training? I said, would we call it classical? No, maybe you don't call it classical. Formal training. Formal training in music, I suppose. Is I, I would say that, yeah, I mean, the mu some of the music that I've written, um, I mean, prior to the to my time at Westfield, when the songs that I did write, I wasn't really all that happy with. And now I'm actually using for um, one of the songs that I wrote, we're actually going to be recording a version of it that we're going to play on Friday at my show. Um we're actually going to be using that that version for um, uh, my a project in my American music class with Dr. Lawson, um, and so I, because I'm I want to I want to learn my influences behind it because I don't know fully the influences of it, but I but because and because it's one of my pieces I want to I want to learn what influenced it, but it it what it, it, uh, it has been formed due. I I believe due to my musical training because it like modalities and stuff like that did play a factor in how it was created. And going back to what what he was saying about uh, music theory, how it's not a set of rules. The way I see it is the music itself is more the spoken language. The music theory is the written language. And you can correct me if I'm wrong. Oh, interesting. You know, that actually <laughs> reminds me of something that Sondheim said. He said that, that music is actually um, a different form of conversation. Mm -hmm. So he really writes, we talk, and we go, we talk, oh, we talk is, is a, our, our two notes, yeah. we talk. So I have actually created music by... Right talking that do you get yeah. i mean like this so, rick it's so interesting i mean like w when you think about it right you know some say that it was it was you know the, uh, here's a tangential comment that's related to what you're saying bob um there are some uh, uh i guess i don't know what you're going to call them uh neurologic historians uh uh scientists um that that f feel that music is what set up the human mind uh, from an evolutionary perspective for language. In other words, music came first. It came before the spoken word, but it, it's a type of language. It, 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 it triggers the language centers in the brain, and it w is what set you know, the human mind in motion for well, language. And, and, of, and, and strangely, table, if you will. yeah, and strangely enough, as we I may have discussed in a former show, the idea of somebody with Alzheimer's or dementia responds to music rather than words sometimes. That the music is the entry into the person's world of Alzheimer's or dementia. I don't know if you folks have ever had that experience in your life where, a, 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 you know, that you want to reach this person, you reach them through music. And you, you, you sort of said it, Ed, there, right? The idea that maybe music came first. And are we all, uh, is our convert, are we having a musical um, symphony here today, Rick, would you say? That there's a musical symphony going on because we're 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 talking and that we're let's hear your song. My, what do you mean, my song? There it is. Da 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 da
Yes. Isn't that a little Morse code for what something? Do you mean, well, it's that, a song. Is that like is SOS? It? Didn't you just send out an SOS? You, it's you a Morse code one. for help. You were the one that did that. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Isn't that correct? Am I teaching? We or could what? Da, 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 da all day long here, Bob. <laughs> da, 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 da. Okay, so I have a question for you. We have a choice of listening to In the Hall of the Mountain King by, uh, by um, Edvard Grieg yeah. or... Teenage Frankenstein by Alice Cooper. I will give Ed the choice. Which would you prefer to hear? Maybe you've heard in the Hall of the Mount King too often. And it's by the Arctic Philharmonic. If you're going to be in the Hall of the Mount King, I suppose you need to be in the Arctic and choir. <laughs> but Alice Cooper also has Teenage Frankenstein. Which would you like, Ed? Uh, that's a tough question because I'm curious about the Alice Cooper, but but I want to hear the Greek. Okay, so we're gonna. I'll tell you what. Uh, we'll we're gonna do both. We're gonna hear not back to back. We'll do. Which one do you want to hear first? Which would you like to hear first? It's not. Go with the Cooper. You're going with the Cooper. Coop. The All Coop. Right. Okay, so wh what, yeah. what are we going to listen to yeah. in this song, Mr. Max? Well, we're going to hear some very early Alice Cooper, um, just talking about how, how he's sort of a new kid on the block, and so he's strange to everyone else around him. I would also like to give a, a quick shout-out and sort of somewhat dedicate this, this song to a buddy of my father's who actually passed away recently due to Alzheimer's. Uh, Alice Cooper was a... He was a huge fan of Alice Cooper, so I would like to dedicate this to his buddy yeah. Sal. We, we are, uh, you, Max, you were saying, but the, in the song you're going to hear a soccer. So tell me, tell that business about Brazilian soccer. Or no, something. that's the, that's the Iron Maiden one. Oh, that's the Iron Maiden. Oh, yeah. right. we'll save that. We'll for save later. that for we'll, the very we'll, end. All righty. So <laughs> let's hear Teenage Frankenstein. Frankenstein. Got some scars and a break. 
Underwriting for Community Radio on WSKB is brought to you in part by Rockies. Over 30 convenient locations throughout Massachusetts, Rhode Island, New Hampshire, Connecticut, and Florida. One of the nation's largest ace dealers. Expertise and great product selection in paint, hardware, lawn and garden. That's Rockies, rock solid service since 1926. On the web at Rockies. Dot com. Hi, it's Bob Plass, and I have Wow, It's Tuesday, every Tuesday, 6 to 8. Wow, It's Tuesday. Community Radio. 89.5 WSTV. I did it! <laughs> Live from Studio 120 at Westfield Technical Academy, this is WCPC Channel 15 and 89.5 FM, WSKB Westfield. Wow, it is. Uh, we are, I don't hey, wow, know the Tuesday. name. What? Wow, it's, it's Tuesday. Tuesday, Bob. Tuesday. Hey, everybody, there are all kinds of wonderful things happening at Westfield on Weekends. You go to westfieldonweekends.com, and you're going to see all of the great events. There are up close and musical events happening that start this week and next week at the university and at 105 Elm Street in downtown Westfield. Uh, we are so thrilled to be have a great association. Westfield on Weekends, our not-for-profit, has a great association with the music department, uh, the art department, and the theater department at Westfield State, as well as other departments. Uh, and we are working closely to uh, meld, as best we can, the university with the town. And it is almost as if you're melding. I didn't realize this, but I am wearing Alice Cooper in in a, in a way. I I must have been channeling an Alice Cooper. Which of the? This is an interesting question for Rick Barry, personal assistant. Wait, wait. Which of the? If you had to wear a costume of a musical artist, who would you choose? Now that's a question both for Ed and for you. And it's not you're just going to go, uh, you, you have to be that person in costume. Is there somebody that you'd like to choose? Hmm. I don't know. Hmm. Ed, do you have anybody? Oh. oh uh, uh, that anybody, can you repeat the question? I'm having some technical difficulties oh, oh, yeah. here, I'm sorry. Yes, uh, which, which artist would you like to go, which musical artist would you like to go as on Halloween? Uh, we've got Max Dewey here dressed as Gene Simmons, right? And I am, without knowing it, Alice Cooper. In a way. In a, in, <laughs> in a strange way. <laughs> All right. Um, who would you like to be? Um, uh, I'm thinking Marcel Mule. <laughs> <laughs> Mar Marcel Mule. I know that yeah, he's, he's a... a yeah, he, he was, he's the father of the classical saxophone. I think uh, it'd be fun yeah. to go as uh, Marcel Mule. Marcel Mule. <laughs> yeah. And what would you would you be a mule? Would your costume have anything bovine attached to it? I, I guess no, 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 nothing. His, 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 yeah, he's a, he was he was a, uh, born in Belgium. Uh, introduced the world to the saxophone in 1846 um, in 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 Paris. I, I I think you've played. I've heard some Marcel Mule out of your beautiful saxophone mouth, right? <laughs> is that the way? Is that the way you say it? Isn't there a sax yes, quartet somewhere. up there yeah. called the Marcel Mule uh, Quartet? Yeah, we uh, the quartet I, I uh, direct at Westfield State um, University is named after Marcel Mule. I call it the Marcel Mule Quartet. Ah, yeah. Um, to, yeah. Ed, tell us what about up close and musical because if folks go to westfieldandweekends.com or even to westfield.ma.edu and go to the music department you will see a lot of wonderful events happening both downtown and at the university tell us about up close and musical and uh, music at westfield um yeah okay um up Close and Musical is uh, an event that we have um, on occasion downtown at the um at the Creative Arts Center, um, that's um, uh, run by Westfield on weekends. Um, and, with you, with um, you as well. I'm sorry. With you, you're part of that. Oh yes, of course, in partnership with yeah. uh, the music department and Westfield on weekends. Yeah. And um, uh, we bring 
uh, a slate of music students uh, down to the Creative Arts Center to perform on a Friday night, and um, and each each individual does a number, and then we have a a, a, a Q and A session where uh, people can ask questions and talk. It's really charming. Every time we do this, it's just um, it's it's a delightful time. Uh, it's it's a low stakes environment where um, you know, uh, and, a, and a welcoming environment for, uh, you know, people of all sorts to uh, enjoy um, all sorts of, of different uh, styles of music because, uh, you know, each individual student at Westfield State is, is working with a different uh, private instructor and working on particular uh, um, music, whether it be a Broadway song or a classical uh song in the area of voice or um, a woodwind sonata or a brass uh, a sonata or a concerto or a chamber barbershop music, co- bar- a barbershop quartet. quartet we had one night yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah we did so the the variety is there and uh, um, it's kind of built into the to the uh, program and uh, and then this the students get an opportunity to they you know they gain experience performing and then also uh, you know, talking uh, about the music that they're playing. It's really uh, a wonderful experience. Um, and it, it really, it's a, it's a lovely thing. And I would uh, encourage anyone uh, to come on down and check it out. Yeah, it's free. It's, uh, it's costs, free. costs nothing. Who yeah. MCs that? Um, oh. Uh, well, usually it's Bob. <laughs> um, but um, yeah. this Friday, it's, yes. um, I guess it's going to be me. Uh, (laughs) unfortunately i'm not going to be there i wish i could channel myself right down because i have never missed one of these events and i just love it we learn so much about music and our students and uh i'm so proud to be a part of this or you're gonna have to come your band is playing on friday night we're we're competing yeah yeah See, this is why you should have dressed up as Captain Kirk from Star Trek, because then we could have beamed you in for the for Westfield on weekends, and then we could have just beamed you back. I, I, I'm perfectly willing to be William Shatner <laughs> if I can keep his hair. Yeah. I would, I would say... Max, where's your show Friday? My show is in Ludlow. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> at Vanished Brewery. It's van- at Vanished Valley, Valley Brewery. Yep. It's, um, yeah, so the band is me and my... F- father and his three colleagues so it's we play rock and roll it's a lot of fun isn't that great uh they keep it in the family you know um you've got to talk to uh to ed sometime about appearing downtown with us sometime and and uh and playing playing a different kind of music for folks would you are you ready Me or, for that? or our band? No. Well, your band would be welcome. <laughs> our band it. would have to be an outdoor gig in the summer. Yeah, We're we'll work on that one. That. <laughs> but but your you alone on the guitar playing something. Are you ready for that or? I'll I'll, I'll figure something out. Yeah. Hey, Ed, what did you think of Teenage Frankenstein? What would you tell us as you heard Teenage Frankenstein? Rhythm and blues. Rhythm yep. and blues. Yeah, Alice Cooper's an R&B guy, you know. He packages it a little differently, but that's pretty much what it is. It's good stuff. Rhythm and blues um, with a hint you know, of shock horror. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. I was going to say, I, Max, I think I know why we haven't seen you down at the Friday night things yet. <laughs> at least, have you played for one yet? I don't think I haven't have. played downtown yet. because you're gigging. Yeah. You're often gigging on Friday yeah. nights when yeah. we're doing that, I think. So, yeah. so he's often playing playing out so uh, that's one of the speaking, a little bit of a drawback yeah. always doing it on friday yeah speaking yeah. of gigging you uh we have a jam at the nook have you been to the nook lately ricardo uh no not lately i haven't it's a great place for music isn't it yeah in the back room there what jam night at the nook is i think next week if i'm not mistaken isn't next it wednesday yeah. On Wednesday, uh, the Westfield State University Jazz, uh, small, smaller jazz group. Uh, uh, I'm still trying to figure out a good name for that group. I hate the idea. They call them combos, jazz combos in jazz programs around the country. And I always feel that feels that sounds like you're ordering a, you know, a Subway. cheeseburger and a fry or something. Yeah. Yeah. The jazz chords. Uh, yeah, the jazz chord. Yeah. Um, anyway, they're hosting uh, the the session on 
on Wednesday, November 1st. So they're going to play a set uh, of music that they've been working on, and then uh, then we'll open things up for a jam session afterwards. Uh, wow. it, it should be a blast. It always is. Uh, the Nook's a great place. It has this authentic jazz club feel. It's uh, It has a patina on it that's kind of... Uh. Really quite cool. Oh, man, it's um, so cool. I, it's I a, it's on case, Franklin you know? Street for everybody that's near Westfield. Franklin Street and um, near Elm and Franklin. It's right very close to the corner there. It's um, that, and it's next Hootkeys. to that Rock Locks uh, salon, right? Yes, yeah. Rock Locks yeah. salon, speaking of heavy rock. Yeah. Um, uh, w- then next week also... The November 2nd through 4th, there's a musical that one of the folks at um, uh, the last Up Close and Musical sang from. It's called Renaissance. It's, it looks like it's misspelled, but it's actually a poem by Edna St. Vincent Millay that isn't rena- Renaissance like the Renaissance Fair. It's, it, it is a poem, R-E-N-A-S-C-E-N-C-E, Incredible like music. Yeah. Incredible yeah. music. Is it pronounced Renaissance, maybe? Yeah. Renaissance? Maybe it's Renaissance. That yeah. sounds like a, you know, a store where, I, well, I, I, I think I could get a, 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 a nice $5, um, $5 hat for $10. No, for, for $2. You know, Renaissance. Sort of like, what do you call it? I, Family dollar. Wait. <laughs> I, I, got, I, got, I have yeah. no clue. Do you? Anybody? Nope. All right. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Mike, I, <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, I'm so sorry. Hey, you, um, we want to get in in the Hall of the Mountain King so Max Dewey can hear Edvard Grieg. This is Peer Gint. Peer Gint, when did Grieg write? Was it the turn of the 18th, the 18th century? I think probably, right? Do we know? Yeah, he was on the cusp. On the cusp there. Uh, this is a, um, yeah. uh, it's from his opera, Piergit. If I, I, and you know. Which is a lot, it's actually a lot darker than most people realize because of the, like, you hear mourning from Pier, Piergit, and it's so light and airy, oh, but then beautiful. there's like this darkness that you never get to because. You never, yeah. yeah. And in the Hall of the Mountain King is often associated with Halloween because mm-hmm. we've got, um, this person being chased around by the trolls. You can see it. I actually, let's hear the Arctic Philharmonic do in the Hall of the Mountain King. Ed, this is for you and all uh, music lovers everywhere.
Support for the community programming of WSKB is provided by the Dunkin' Donut Shops of Westfield and the Sardinia family. It's nice to know that even as the world changes, Dunkin' Coffee remains the same at seven convenient locations throughout Westfield. Listen to me, Michael Buster McMahon, Mondays 8 to 10 a.m. to learn the stories behind your favorite songs. Or don't, I, I'm not the boss of you. Community Radio 89.5 WSKB. Live from Studio 120 at Westfield Technical Academy, this is WCPC Channel 15 and 89.5 FM WSKB Westfield. Wow. You know, Ed, I was just reading what happens in that song. Apparently, Pierre Ginn falls in love with the troll king's daughter. And then they, the trolls chase him around the hall. Um, and the lyrics that they sing are all about the various ways that, that Pierre Ginn is going to be tortured as a punishment for falling in love with the king's daughter. Very interesting, huh? Yeah. Do, does that, that yeah. sort of... that. Fast. It reminds me like Bolero or something that just starts speeds slow up. and speeds up. Is there a, a musical term for that kind of music at all? A chel rondo, right? Would be a um, Yeah, that's that's one term that applies to music that that, um, that increases in tempo. I have a I, I have a really weird connection. I'm having a hard time hearing. I can't hear the music, and I'm, oh, I'm having a hard time no. hearing your question. Oh no! Can Peter hear that? Yeah, let's yeah, see. I, I'm, do, I'm, I'm, I can hear you now, but um, yeah, can you hear me uh, there? There. Yeah, yeah. Wonderful. Um, and you don't want to miss a, uh, a, a word that I'm saying. <laughs> it's going to be music <laughs> to your ears. You know, um, yeah. West Westfield State uh, for the music department. When do you start to audition folks for the music department? When do students apply for the music program? Um, we have several audition dates that are posted on our webpage. Um, and, uh, but we also have uh, what's called rolling admission. And, and uh, if people get in touch with us by, uh, by phone or sending me an email, they can also call Michelle, our administrative um, uh, associate there uh, in the music office at Westfield State University. Um, we can uh, set up uh, audition uh, times or and also times to come and visit and you can shadow um, a student or attend some classes just to see um, you know see what it's like you right. can take a lesson um, on an instrument you know of, of your choice or whatever your your instrument of choice is you can uh, yeah. you can take and a, a and test lesson and um, yeah. So uh, you could even yeah. play one of the Steinways because uh, for those listening anywhere but Westfield, if you're looking for a school for music, this is an all Steinway school. And what do you mean by that? What do we mean by that? All Steinway. Uh, we we had a, a, a large anonymous donation that allowed us to buy uh, um, several Steinway pianos and and make all the pianos in our in our institution uh, um, Steinway produced pianos um, and so they're and they're all they're they're maintained but we by them as well but we the stars of the show are our two nine foot um, Steinway concert grands right and then we have a, a four uh, seven foot Steinway grand pianos and then a whole series of uh, of uprights and smaller um, uh, grands uh, scattered throughout the building. And uh, downtown we Westfield. We thank God for... Yeah, that's right. We have one yeah, at, have at one 105 downtown. Elm Street to the Creative Arts Center. Where are all kinds that's of... Right. There's a zines course going on Saturday. Please join us for a zines course. It's only $30, and it's the, the uh, librarian... Uh, I think her name is... Uh, her last name is Booten... Cooper and I th could it be Anne Anne Marie Booten Cooper um, from Westfield State. She is a librarian and she's teaching a zines, you know, you know, a zines class. Interestingly enough, uh, and so go to westfieldonweekends.com for all that information. Go to westfieldonweekends.com for everything. Our uh, exhibit, uh, Promise of Liberty, an unfinished uh, uh, puzzle 
closes this weekend. And so if you go on Friday night, you'll get a chance to see this incredible exhibit about immigration and the Statue of Liberty. Just really good. It's Journey Stories Part 1. It's with the Smithsonian Institute. At any rate, um, hey, both you guys, um, I wonder, yeah, look at that. That it's the tongue of Gene Simmons. Yes, music, the musical tongue of Gene Simmons. <laughs> Ed, I'm gonna, I, I would love to see you. We are, you're coming as Marcel Mule, right, to my Halloween party? <laughs> one, uh, one row. Yeah, I cannot, sure. yeah, yeah. And um, we've got Rick Barry. I don't know what Rick, you're, you're gonna be coming as which, um, which musical person? Probably, maybe a guitarist from law. From you know, how about a guitarist from? He's gonna come as Jimmy, uh, Jerry Garcia. Jerry Garcia. There we are, Jerry Garcia. I am going to come as Frank Sinatra, and then I can be I, I really for cool. sure you were gonna say Michael Bublé. Well, <laughs> you know, Michael Bublé is the uh, is the what what would we call him? The 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 he's the next generation of Sinatra, right? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, actually, fair. we're going to go out and we're going to listen to Sinatra's. I, I'm going to play Iron Maiden next time. Okay. For you, Max Million Dewey. I love having you on your and uh, you bring a, a, a fun and also an intelligence to the show. The first hour is fun, Max. The second hour is serious, Max. He's a serious musician, and <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Ed, you know what? I love having you on the board of Westfield on weekends. I love having you as a friend and on 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 television. You make great great radio and TV. Incidentally, did you know that? Uh, I didn't, but thank you. I appreciate it, and the pleasure is all mine. All righty, I'm going to play to as we go out my to cleanse our palates, as as I, I, an 80 year old might say, a 78 year old like me. Let's hear a little Frank Sinatra. This is Halloween Frank Sinatra. It's Nelson Riddle's version of witchcraft. Bye, everyone. Happy Halloween. Whoa! Be afraid. Be very afraid. <laughs> Bye. Peter's going to play witchcraft. There. Those fingers in my hair That sly come hither stare That strips my conscience bare It's witchcraft And I've got no defense for it The heat is too intense for it What good would common sense for it do? Cause it's witchcraft Wicked witchcraft And although I know It's strictly taboo When you arouse the need in me My heart says yes indeed in me Proceed with what you're leading me to It's such an ancient pitch But one I wouldn't switch Cause there's no nicer witch than you And although I know it's strictly taboo When you arouse the need in me My heart says yes indeed in me 
Proceed with what you're leading me to It's such an ancient pitch But one that I'd never switch Cause there's no nicer witch than you 